that's because they're following a Hasatan who looks like Yeshua in their mind. He's masquerading as an angel of light. You know, we have this in the Beware False Prophets teaching. The Jesus of mainstream Christianity is masquerading as Yeshua of the scriptures. Yes or no? Okay. And so then what do we have? We have a Hebrew roots movement, a messianic movement, all kinds of other people who want you to believe that it's just the semantics about the name and it's not about the masquerading. It's not about what it represents and, and who it represents and how it represents him. Oh, what's the difference? It's just a name. You've heard me teach. I've never made it about the pronunciation of the name. It's always been about how the name is being used to and what it's being used to represent. It's being used to masquerade. In other words, I talk about like a false costume overlay over the truth, and then you have this very sort of 60s flower child Jesus who looks like he came from Haight-Ashbury or something. You know, straight from San Francisco. Love, peace, and... I mean, he didn't look anything like that. Okay? But yet, this is the image they want us to have. And so, Paul says, look, it's no wonder. You know, with all these things, it's no wonder that, they, that you have these things because people are buying into what looks like truth when it's not. Just understand, he's saying, there, there are false emissaries and all deceptive work, etc. And no wonder, because it's easy for them to be following what they think is Yeshua, but it's not. What they think is the Father, but it's not, because the masquerading that's going on on the highest levels with Hasatan himself and his emissaries, his emissaries, his servants. Wow. You're going to have to be on the highest level of vigilance and you're going to have to just not just buy into and take everything that comes along and really test and prove because there's a lot of ones out there that seem very good, very legitimate, very whatever, and it's not. Okay, it's not going to be that way. You're going to come to realize that it's not like you want it to be. Oh, but I like this person in there. I like their teachings and I like their personality. And this other guy, well, I know he's teaching whatever, but I don't like him and he's caustic and harsh and whatever. Don't be about the messenger, be about the message. Okay? Are you hearing what you need to hear? Are you hearing it clean and unfettered and unfiltered and unblemished as best as can be done? Are you hearing something that resonates with you because, after all, it's familiar because it's mesocostal or mesobaptist or methocat, whatever it is. It's messianic mixed with whatever denomination you came from. Because that's still going to have the familiar to it. But we have to be careful because there is an active agenda of Hasatan and his emissaries to convince you that they and he are Yeshua and Yeshua's emissaries. That is an active agenda and you must be aware of it and don't get all like, well, you know, it'll be obvious and I'll figure it out because, no, because you're still thinking like Christianity wants you to think, which is the enemy is going to be this overtly obvious evil looking scary thing no 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 Paul tells you really clearly Hasatan himself looks to you and can look to you as a messenger of light even you would think he's Yeshua himself you would be so impressed if he manifested himself that way which is why people will bow down to the false messiah when he comes because he will look like everything they think he should look like Key word is what they think he should look like. You've been sold an image. See, that's part of the darkness and light thing. Hopefully I've helped enlighten you so that you won't be fooled by what really is darkness that's going to present itself as light. And so it's not about the semantics. It's not about how you pronounce his name. What image is linked to the name? And one of the things that drives me more 
frustrated than anything is the teachers out there that will say Yeshua slash Jesus on their websites or when they correspond or when they're speaking or, I'm sorry, but they're not presented the same way. And it's not about the name as lots of people who are attacking us right now would try to say. Well, you know, in my King James it says, well, you know what, there's a lot of problems with your King James. For all you, new, you know, all you King James only people. All right? And so, well, it says Jesus in my King James. All right, so that's the English translation they put there. I don't really mind how he was translating of name. I'm looking at 2,000 years of how the name was used to convince you of a particular behavioral image that you're imitating. Okay, that name is used to bring you into darkness or stay in darkness because it does away with all the law. You can't be in the light if the law is done away with a nail to the cross. We were already told that earlier with about the whole circumcised and uncircumcised. We just read that in Romans, right? The one that's actually keeping the covenant and doing the Torah is the one that actually is covenanted and walking in light. You who think you're covenanted might actually be in darkness if you're not doing it, is what he was telling people. So if in the name of one, we are feeling like, wow, we honor and respect that every word that comes out of the mouth of Elohim, we must embrace and do as our Messiah did, or the other name that's used to say, oh, no, no, that's all been done away with. If we can't see that simple difference, we're in trouble. So it's not just about pronouncing the name. Because they'll say, well, we go back to the Greek, and they'll go, I don't care. I probably wouldn't even have that big a deal of a problem with the name, even though I would say that he never had a Greek name, if it wasn't being used like this. But it's being used, and that's the problem. And you have a hard time, if you were raised that way, disconnecting that image from that name. It's almost impossible for you to disconnect that process of behavior, what you felt was the right way to do things in the context of your creator, in the Messiah, under that name, and then connect it differently to Torah observant, covenant, and still keep that other name. There's a disconnect in our brain. And so therefore, those who want to keep holding on to the name, that other name, the Jesus name, We'll call it right out what it is. I'm sorry, but there's still a darkness that you are refusing to come out of. Okay? And I'm not claiming that, you know, I can prove that the way we pronounce his name, Yeshua, Yehoshua, whatever it is, is exact, right, whatever. I know that the oldest manuscripts in the Aramaic have it as Yeshua. And so I understand that. Even the, what looks like might be a tax on him in the Talmud, call him Yeshua or Yeshu. It doesn't have these other things. But that's not the argument. The argument is what does it represent? Because after all, we're becoming transformed into the image of one or the other. What's the image connected to each name? I mean, that's the simplicity. What image is connected to the name? One will lead you into the light the other will keep you immersed in darkness under false light. It's not enough that you know that he came, was born, and you know, went, lived a life, was you know, crucified, and, and then was resurrected. I mean, that knowledge is, 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 is important, but it's not enough. If it doesn't transform you or cause you to desire transformation, because just that information alone doesn't change anything, but because you have the information, you should be inspired to transform.